Hello, me lovelies. It's me, Ned Natter, with the famously unpassed Roy's and unfiltered Ned Natter radio show, ready to brighten your day. First up, it's great to be here again with you. It's time for a good old Natter with an international flavour. But remember, I don't chat about the regular news and current affairs. Oh no, I'm here to give you a break from it all. Yep, a good laugh, even when it's only once a week on a Wednesday. <laughs> Remember though, you can listen to all my shows again. Yep, they're all safe here as podcasts at nednatter.com. Yep, okay, well, put everything down. No, everything, I mean you too. Come on, it's time for the Ned Natter Show, and you can't miss this. <laughs> this week on the Ned Natter Show, I take a look at electronic babysitters. Me farmhouse is full of stuffers and party guests. Yep, that's three days of mayhem. Elsie bakes a cake for everyone. Oh dear, yep, in my book review this time I review a colouring book. An old nan is still brushing up on her poker and witchcraft skills. <laughs> At Two Medicine Farm, or what's now loosely referred to as Ned Natter's Florida Island, it's been somewhat seasonal, basically, what with the wife Elsie, her best buddy beyond it, that's beyond it, Brandy Washington or BBW to her friends, and the MIL, or the monstrous mother-in-law, Satana Troglodyte, in residence. Oh dear, suddenly we're overrun with holiday stuffers. <laughs> but not stockings here. They're cavernous males that eat me out of house and home. The microwave oven's running on overtime. I even bought Elsie a new one, but instead of replacing the old one, she's running both. Yeah, even the conventional oven is stuffed and it looks like I'm going to have to replace me sofa in the new year. Yep, with the 20-yard dumpster. That way, it gets cleaned out at least once a month. Added to that, the commercial version holds at least three tonnes. Yep. I really don't know if they'll notice the difference, though. You know, well, maybe with a little bit of extra elbow room, but uh, other than that, yep, it might be that time of year. You know, time to indulge a bit, but around here, excessive consumption is a regular daily event. <laughs> By the way, to kind of balance things out, we had me and Quentin, political commentator, neighbour old Rush as a guest, and I decided because Quinton and Coagulate and me fireman Ding Dang had nowhere else to go, I'd invite them all for a seasonal dinner. <laughs> mm. Then because me farm artist retreat is looking closer to a lonely arts club, I invited everyone else too. See, for me, it's all about balance and not just a weight thing either. You know, they'll be so busy chatting away and arguing amongst themselves. They won't notice me absence from the farmhouse for a few hours. <laughs> oh, it gives me time to catch up mentally. And of course, quietly too. I enjoy a bit of intelligent conversation, see. But there's no chance of it around here. I get more sense out of chatting to me pet pig, old Bill, or even me farm dog, young Clay. Even the odd bark or grunt beats the kind of human company I'm likely to encounter indoors. <laughs> I wanted to invite me lovely vegan neighbour young Alice, see, but the wife likes to stare. Mm, added to that, Alice plans on spending the party day fasting and meditating in the tranquility of a private zen room. Very nice idea. <laughs> As I told you before, it's already been looking more like an artist rehab rather than a treat round here anyway. <laughs> me camper artist retreat manager Quinton's eager to get more like-minded folks here on the farm, but we're having a slowdown on account of the holiday season. Yep, but the ones already here are adding to the entertainment factor with the last to show, Norman, Quinton's hungry young man. Yep, 50 years too late, writing a poem for everyone present. Yep, oddly joyous and light-hearted is he. Uh, I think the worst part is everything he writes seems to sound closer to a suicide note than a poem. I'd enjoy reading anyway. <laughs> He's like the master of doom and gloom. Me and constant political commentator neighbour old Rush decided to lecture him on puppets in a swampy congress. <laughs> and Norman already had a poem in the works uh, with that little title. <laughs> oh dear. Poor old Rush didn't know whether to laugh or cry, but excused himself all the same. <laughs> Our snowbird couple, Martha and Marty, the vaudeville act, put on their special seasonal show in me stable. I was happy to dodge that on account of me straw and hay allergies. Mm. <laughs> Afterwards, nobody had much to say about it either. I guess they were all in shock. <laughs> so later that night, I took me poor old horse and namesake, 
old Ned, a pile of fresh carrots to compensate. But when I arrived, his ears were way back. Yeah, that was a clear enough message and a perfect way of describing the invaders in me stable. You know, if that horse could have spoken, I'd have enjoyed every minute of his ash criticism. Yep, four hoofs down and two ears back. <laughs> Two other camper artists are still here too. Galon, yep, he self-described self-help guru. He's been hammering out the words to his latest self-help book in his own teepee in the corner of me far field. Add to that, he started on a second book, his first horror story. Yep, the monsters at Two Medicine Farm. <laughs> when he visited the farmhouse, he got first hand and close up and personal with the monsters. You know, <laughs> I think he might go back to self-help. It'll be safer that way. He hardly safe with a mother-in-law on the prow anyway, his TP is hardly a fortress, is it? On the other hand, Galon is one of the most opinionated people I've ever met, and he likes to bore everyone with his so-called expertise on just about everything, from asthma right through to zits. But I think he went too far, you know, when he told Rush that all golf courses should be ploughed in and used for veggies and cannabis production to help the economy. <laughs> Rush got quite agitated with that one and told him that all socialist, communist, democrat hippies should be outlawed and ploughed in too. Oh dear, nearly ended up with a fight there. <laughs> then there was the deeply unhappy Wilma, our angry, recently divorced sculptor. She's taken a break from tapping away night and day at that huge lump of Indiana limestone to join us in the festivities. Mm, trouble is, you can't really chat with her apparently anything and everything we say brings back bad memories of a deeply unhappy marriage and results in the closest thing to Niagara Falls. Yep, from her eyes. <laughs> Old man, my 95-year-old mother, arrived with the answer, or should I say, a cure-all for every kind of illness or worry. Yep, enough whiskey to poison the average person. <laughs> In a matter of minutes, Wilma was bleary-eyed and losing at poker faster than any of old Nan's usual victims. Wilma even resorted to writing Nan a check. <laughs> and the pot got pretty big once Nan's best buddy and gambling drinking fiend Toshiko Suzuki was in the mix. Yep, she's me lawyer brother and black sheep of the family, Nelson, that as a wife and Beverly Hills sex therapist, Heiner's now 103-year-old grandmother. Yep, another long-lasting specimen here on the farm. <laughs> Away from their inevitable card sharp shakedowns, they've spent the week setting me dog clay on our young UPS guy. He's been here every day this week, dropping off endless food boxes for Elsie and beyond it. Nam seems to have convinced me dog that everything brown has to be attacked. <laughs> See, I think Nan reckons it will slow the UPS guy down enough for her to finally catch up with her younger prey. Oh dear. She's only after one of his packages, and that's a nasty thought, to say the least. After all, he's under the old crow's spell. Nobody else round here will be getting any regular packages for days. <laughs> then last of our retreaters, X-Ray, finally returned two days ago, and yes, it had been abducted. As you recall, it wants to shake all regular gender or person identifiers. That means we can't say he... She, they, or them. No, just it. <laughs> oh well, anyway, X-Ray didn't get abducted by aliens after all. But by a weird cult instead. Yep, we got more than our fair share here in Florida. <laughs> See, they were planning a sacrifice. Oh dear. Only they found out its sexuality assignment was questionable. They let it go. <laughs> oh dear. So now X-Ray's back on the farm and back to painting with his bodily fluids. Fortunately, it doesn't celebrate anything, so we were spared the opportunity of introducing X-Ray to Rush, or worse still, the mother-in-law. Although Quinton's peaceful partner, Craglet, the most blissfully happy person here at Two Medicine Farm, decided to take time out and teach our most unusual guest how to play the guitar. <laughs> After three chords and a bit of hopeless strumming, even Craglet walked away with a frown. Oh dear. <laughs> You reckon that although X-Ray wasn't abducted by aliens, it behaves like one. Yep, one step away from a zombie in amongst the human race, for sure. 
This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com. Anyway, thinking of hideous nightmares like me farm guests. I'm still having these really weird dreams. They return with a vengeance like never before. Add to that, the weirdest ones always seem to arrive when I'm having a nice nap, but never in bed. This time, though, I was resting up in my favourite farm armchair. I was the only one home. As everyone had gone to Martha and Marty's little stable-born, straw-studded theatrical performance, I began to sneeze at the thought of it. (laughs) Anyway, with peace and quiet, not a blaring TV, droning voices or microwave pinging anywhere, it was rather nice and I happily drifted off in no time at all. The odd thing about this dream is it started off so nicely. It was a memory of me childhood. Yep, four years old and spying on the living room fireplace on Christmas Eve in the hope of actually seeing Santa creep down our sooty old chimney. (laughs) I could still recall the excitement being four years old and without a care in the world. Back then, I dozed off waiting and in the morning discovered a big pile of presents anyway. So the childhood mystery remained sacred and intact. Only this was the world of dreams, wasn't it? I then began to see soot falling down towards the grate and then I saw a big white boot. I watched carefully but nothing else appeared. But that was until I saw an enormous crack appearing in the wall. The plaster splitting open and an enormous gut exploding over the mantelpiece, throwing family photos and the brass mantel clock to the floor. Bricks and water and plaster flew everywhere and I could hear the remains of the chimney dropping onto the roof outside. Once some of that dust had cleared, I could now see the sooty red suit and what looked like an inebriated red face to match. (laughs) Then I looked closer. It began to speak. But there wasn't a cheery ho ho ho. Oh no, it was a different voice altogether. I'm I'm so so angry after all that that and the stable stable was was freezing. freezing. (laughs) I naively answered, what, for your reindeer? (laughs) What are you talking about, Ned? The voice continued. I awoke suddenly and there in front of me... was the nightmare, not the dream. Yep, it wasn't Santa at all, but the wife, Elsie. (laughs) Complaining as usual. Oh dear, I was suddenly up to date. No childhood musing, but the wife had returned, cold and hungry after watching Martha and Marty's slow-going play. According to Elsie, there was no reindeer, just me poor old lame horse standing in the corner of the stable, shuddering, I'm witnessing something far lamer than him. (laughs) This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com, where they're all stored for you as podcasts. So if you want me repeats or can handle listening to me voice all over again, stop by and say hi. On the other hand, me scruffy farm and Ding Dang cleaned himself up when he visited the farmhouse. Yep, it was moving away from good old soap and water and getting close to an hammer and chisel job. <laughs> I think while mentioning chisels, he was open to play with more than just Sculptor Wilmer's limestone this time. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he was rebuffed again with an excuse. First directly from Wilmer then followed by an unpleasant remark from old Nan. And believe me, she does not beat around the bush. It was something like the only thing he'd be playing with at the party would be himself. (laughs) Naturally, with Nan's favourite sprinkling of expletives attached here, there and there. (laughs) But despite the drama, I've still got that unforgettable little feature on my show, so here's Ding Dang's southern quote. I was born at night, but not last night. (laughs) He seems to have finally realised that Wilma's excuses are just a way of avoiding him. After three weeks of nose, it's finally sunk into his version of limestone. Yep, his head. Something closer to reinforce concrete. (laughs) 
This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com, where they're all stored for you as podcasts. So if you want me repeats or can handle listening to me voice all over again, stop by and say hi. Well, next up, I've got my new segment for you, and it's called Ned's Sagacious Moment. I might not be a serious old sage, but I've got time to think, and I like the idea of sharing my thoughts with you, my listeners. So moving on from farm life in general for a minute, I spent a few hours this week questioning electronic babysitters. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the latest wonder from Silicon Valley, Japan or China. Oh no. After all, TV might have been used for years, but now with devices in hand, there's no escape, is there? Everything is learned from a screen, not reality. Kids are attempting to scroll through real paper books and wondering why they don't spring open and say welcome. Add to that, they're not noticing anything in the store or whilst they're travelling the car because they're watching a cartoon on their parents' phone or, if they're over six years old, their own phone. Oh dear. Surely touch and sight are some of the most important natural learning tools and swiping a little finger across a piece of glass is not going to cut it if we're expecting real, natural development of children in the future. They'll grow up swiping pets, trees, flowers and even each other and that's a big, sad, oh dear, for me. This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com, where they're all stored for you as podcasts. So if you want me repeats or can handle listening to me voice all over again, stop by and say hi. Despite the cooler nights, me blind neighbour old Lonnie and his housemate knew to Swinger Old Fred's house is the hottest venue in North Florida for a swingers party every Saturday night. It's called Do You Know Fred? And sometimes I wish I didn't. (laughs) Oh dear, it arrives each week with one guarantee. The same old drill. Bring a bottle, bring your wife and potluck dishes for the buffet. Fred mingles with like-minded swingers. Yep, and that's potluck too. Whilst old Lonnie eats his way through mountains of free food. So when Saturday finally rolled round, Fred told me this week's party theme was Mr. Santa and Miss Claus. <laughs> oh dear, this is supposed to be Fred getting seasonal. Only I don't think you'd call it imaginative, eh? Anyway, they started to show. That's right, his happy band of party swingers. Plenty of oversized, standard-looking Santas. But Miss Claus? Oh no. Now I've got you thinking, haven't I? Miss America, Miss World, Miss Universe? Oh well. Yep, I understand your optimism too, but we're talking Fred's party in North Florida. The six Miss Clauses that showed were closer to the female versions of the Santos. (laughs) Just wearing a lot less in the red and white trim department. And believe me, that's not always a good thing with Fred's guests. (laughs) I headed home very quickly. Well, on the family front, when she's not complaining about, well, just pick a subject and she complains. My 95-year-old mother, old Nan, the miserable old crew herself, has a little feature on the show. Yeah, old Nan remembers. Oh dear, it's a little bout of what's professionally termed reminiscence therapy. (laughs) This time, old Nan remembers another one of our long-lost relatives. Yep, long-lost for very good reason. (laughs) We got far too many hideous relatives. Anyway, it was a memory this time about old Leonard, the gunrunner, Death. Yep, and this one had a hideous reputation. See, Death's old nan's maiden name. They like to say Diaf to make it sound better, but I still call them the Deaths, making everything nice and clear and above board. (laughs) Anyway, back to Leonard, the gunrunner, Death. Oh dear, well, he was a notorious character, but the nickname Gunrunner is a bit (laughs) far-fetched. He was no international arms dealer. Actually, he used to literally run everywhere with a shotgun under his arm, shooting what he called vermin, rats, rabbits and other so-called farm nuisances. Once he hit the worst kind of nuisance, he shot himself in the foot. But his days were still numbered after recovering from that little mishap. 
One afternoon, he was running across a huge overgrown meadow when he took a pot shot at something moving in a far field. It looked like an enormous rabbit, but he couldn't be sure. He managed to wing it though, but as he approached, the mystery creature rose up out of the grass and fired back and shot him dead. <laughs> yeah, it was the local gamekeeper who sported a head of thick grey hair and a deer stalker app. I suppose rabbit looking from a great distance anyway. He dropped his glasses on the ground and was on all fours looking for them when old Leonard Death took aim and fired. The rapid end to that member of the Death family was quick and efficient. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com. Well, that lovely tiny old music means it's time again for me book reviews. Yep, yeah, I get me hands on a few and I feature them right here on me show. Just remember, I've got a great system here. Yep, yeah, if a book's shite, it goes on me composty. Sometimes if it's really bad, you have to burn it. <laughs> Middle of row books go in me giveaway charity box and the good or reasonable ones usually stay on me farm library shelf. I hope that's all nice and clear for you. <laughs> OK, then. I've ended up with just one new book this time around, and it's called The Murder Scene Colouring Book by Red Colour Junior. <laughs> yep, jokingly known to his friends as a bloody mess. <laughs> this book offers over 100 pages of detailed drawings of actual murder scenes from around the world, and you can colour them in in your spare time. <laughs> The book even comes with a set of coloured crayons. Yeah, one black, one green, one yellow, one orange, one blue, and naturally, considering the subject matter, ten red ones. <laughs> Add to that, on the back page, there's an advert for his other book, Dot to Dot Crime Scenes for Beginners. The body tape outlines are the easiest to spot. <laughs> You know, I was going to burn this one after me show. I just didn't want to see it again. But then I changed my mind and gave it to Elsie, the wife. She even thought it was a special gift. Yeah, see, I've never given her a book and crayons before. If she does use up all ten red ones, though, she can always add ketchup as a substitute. <laughs> well, me lovelies, that's all on me book review feature this time around. <laughs> This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com, where they're all stored for you as podcasts. So if you want me repeats or can handle listen to me voice all over again, stop by and say hi. i got a listener favourite coming up right now. Yep, me anomalies from around the world feature. This time, we're visiting Denmark, and it's not a revolting foodie one. A few of my listeners say the disgusting delicacies around the world are just too much to bear, so I decided to include this one instead. Put it this way, I just hope you enjoy the reprieve. Anyway, I'm talking about plate smashing. That's right, plate smashing. Yep, it's a big New Year tradition over there in Denmark and involves smashing plates against your neighbours or friends' front door as a way of bringing them good luck in the forthcoming year. <laughs> Apparently, the more smashed plates you get, the more popular you are. Uh, I just feel sorry for the guy who's not only popular, but headed off to bed early. You know, I think I'd be happier being unpopular. Mm. Add to that the hideous sound of smashing crockery, they have another tradition. Yeah, jumping off a chair at the stroke of midnight to symbolise a leap into the new year. Around here, though, with the wife beyond it and the mother-in-law all jumped out the sofa at the same time, there'd be a good chance Florida would register its first ever earthquake. Yep, top of the Richter scale stakes. Oh dear. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com. Well, we didn't have a nasty anomaly, but next up I'm returning to the wife's favourite subject, food of course, Elsie's private recipes and ideas for cooking. Her revolting offerings from the swamp, oh dear, I cook my own food and leave her to that cosy relationship with the microwave. 
here's the next of her so-called recipes. Yep, Elsie's cooking cock-ups. <laughs> so, warm up your microwave and stand well clear in the cooking process. Yep, usually I stay in the barn behind a concrete wall. The recommended distance is at least 50 feet away. Further the better. This time it's Elsie's seasonal cake surprise. Yep, oh dear, it's one of her unique creations. No recipe book needed or online advice. Yep, full of shortcuts and hideous ingredients. <laughs> As usual, Elsie gets carried away and adds her own selection of vile, volatile and plainly unpredictable ingredients. But reckons it's something special that all our guests would enjoy. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> So let's see, Elsie's written it all down on the back of a paper napkin. It's her hideous handwriting all right, scrawled around the edges and dodging the usual coffee, soda, ketchup and mustard stains here, there and over there too. (laughs) Only this time she's used her favourite Sharpie marker and the ink's bled everywhere. Mm. It looks more like a spider has stolen her ink and run away with it. (laughs) Anyway, she started out with a super large plastic bowl. Yep, we found that Clay wanted his bowl back. <laughs> anyway, back to Elsie's ingredients. Six pounds of self-raising flour. Four pounds of sugar. Two pounds of butter. Twelve eggs. One gallon of milk. Eight ounces of almonds. One pound of cashews. Four ounces of peanuts. Four ounces of walnuts. One pound of dates. One tin of prunes. Four of cherries. Twelve ounces of grated mixed cheeses. Oh. Elsie layered all that up with ketchup, dill pickles and a can of pitted olives. Two hot peppers, two cans of crushed tomatoes. And then she had to add her usual extras, of course. You know, vinegar, salt, soy sauce and maple syrup. Oh dear. It started out looking like a rising, nutty, fruity, even nuttier mess for an equally nutty gathering. Mm. <laughs> She then cooked it for 50 minutes in the microwave oven at high heat. A few minutes later, she shoveled it out uh, an overflowing mess. It was now an odd-smelling, nutty, fruity mess. Yeah, that's the only way I can describe it. Nevertheless, after a few hours, she coated the entire thing with whipped cream, confectioner's sugar, candied peel and grated chocolate. (laughs) Soon she reckoned it was ready to eat. Yeah, it's the only time I don't usually hear a word out of the wife but this time she had to wait for everyone else to join in but in the meantime she rattled on about how our guests have never tasted a cake like this before and that it was a momentous occasion Elsie was dead right for a change (laughs) on the other hand tasting something is one thing eating it is entirely another matter and finally actually surviving the experience is another thing all together. Uh. <laughs> By the way, as I've mentioned before, the Ned Nat show will not be held responsible for the results. No, Elsie's cooking is undertaken at your own risk. It not only needs a strong stomach, it needs an even stronger oven. And if possible, you know, a standalone concrete bomb proof building. <laughs> This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com. Well, now we're heading to England. Yep, see, I got a call from Nigel Ponce, the arrogant old catfish-faced gentleman farmer. Me brother Young Buck skipped the USA and manages Ponce's old farm on his rambling state. After living in Pennsylvania for 15 years... But naturally picked up plenty of American expressions and he really enjoys confusing Ponce with them. <laughs> Ponce has to call me for an explanation. See, he hasn't got the internet in the manner. Just good old-fashioned manners. <laughs> so how could I leave the subject of Nigel Ponce without mentioning me special feature right here on the Lenat Show? It's called American for Foreigners. After all, Ponce finds most regular phrases and sayings Oh dear, well, here goes American for Foreigners with me arrogant British aristocratic contributor. (laughs) First up, though, here's his latest voicemail message. You have messages. Well, hello, Ned. This is Nigel Bonds calling you from England. 
Your brother Buck has told me he's working the graveyard to get things done on the farm, and I should give him a Christmas bonus too. Yes, it does sound absolutely ridiculous. Can you tell me what on earth he's talking about, as I haven't a clue? All I wanted to know was whether he's actually working for the cemetery people as well as on my farm. So perhaps you could give me a call back, Ned, and let me know what on earth he's talking about. Thank you so much, old chap. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, I just love the way he introduces himself on me voicemail. As if I actually know someone else that sounds just like him. <laughs> Anyway, let me translate it for you, Nigel. This time Buck says he's working the graveyard. And Nigel thinks Buck's deliberately confusing him. Well, this is a weird expression in a way, Nigel. But Buck's left out the last part of the expression. And that's the word shift. So in other words, he's working through the night to get things done on the farm. And not at your local cemetery. (laughs) But to be honest with you, Nigel, you know, he's not working any longer than usual at all he probably just hasn't sobered up by lunchtime and that's probably about the time his day really starts oh dear anyway i hope that makes some kind of sense to you nigel <laughs> this is ned natter here with the ned natter radio show i am here every wednesday but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com this week was a first. I didn't head over to me and content political commentator neighbor old Russia Stonewall Jackson Brown to listen to the latest second hand news from right centre and all in small instalments. Yep, with a weak bladder, Rush is always rushing off. Poor old mucker. <laughs> this week, Rush was visiting me to spend his holiday here on the farm. He's lonely and kind of invited himself anyway. After all, I couldn't refuse me favourite humorous though bigoted show contributor. Either way, it meant hours of Republican rhetoric surrounded by the sounds of continuous munching emanating from the sofa. Rush spent the entire day pressing his private ideas on just about anyone who'd listen. Also, this week's subject was the decline of financial banks and the rise of food banks. <laughs> the mention of food got the wife's attention. Well, for all the two minutes until she realised Rush didn't have any. Yep, food that is. <laughs> On the other hand, nobody really wanted to discuss politics at a party. Mm, added to that, Rush usually doesn't manage to complete a paragraph before he excuses himself with that standard old statement. Gotta go. Oh dear. Rush has always gotta go. And flush. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com, where they're all stored for you as podcasts. So if you want me repeats or can handle listen to me voice all over again, stop by and say hi. Me lovely neighbour, young Alice Jones, invited me over for our weekly vegan cake and fair trade coffee sit down. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Young Alice was in a happy mood when I visited Word has got around as it always does in rural areas and this week Alice ended up with six turkeys. Yep. They are being integrated into a happy little animal adoption sanctuary as I speak. On the other hand, Alice has been toying with her tarot cards and did me winter solstice reading. Mm. Things seem to be looking up and down. Well, it had me thoughts wandering as I studied my lovely vegan neighbour anyway. <laughs> but then she reminded me of something. Yeah, how I should be taking more notice of the wonders of nature and baffled me again with a really bizarre statement right out of the blue. Scallops have as many as 200 eyes. Yep, they can even grow back damaged or missing eyes and more research is underway to learn more about them. Yep, it brings new meaning to I've got me eye on you, doesn't it? <laughs> Especially when you've got a couple of hundred of them. <laughs> anyway, as always, the coffee, cake and company was reliably nice. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com. Well, my lovelies, it's time for this week's questions and odd news items from you, my listeners. Yep, I got it all here on the Ned Natter Show. (laughs) 
Right then, over the next few weeks, I thought I'd feature a few items featuring the new year. So first up, I got a call from Eldora in Ecuador. Yep, she's called me to let me know about an Ecuadorian New Year tradition. Yep, they burn scarecrows filled with paper at midnight on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Often they look like people they either don't like or they're even famous people. Added to that, they burn photos. You know, and other things from the previous year. Yeah, it's a kind of end of the year clear out, I suppose. Well, as you know, there's nothing more cleansing than a good old fire, is there? Maybe I should have sent them, you know, a few of me hideous books I've had to review this year. <laughs> My second item comes from Ollie in Ohio, and he's got an odd one, and says he read this report about how consumers are scared of misshapen vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that one. Anyway, it seems that over 50 million tonnes of fresh veg and fruit is dumped every year because it doesn't look right. Mm. And that's a massive oh dear, isn't it? In fact, it's a shocking piece of information for me. I, I mean, does a phallic-shaped carrot really taste any different from one of the regular store kind? <laughs> or does a half-moon-shaped spud really matter? Add to that, do you even notice the difference once your veggies are peeled, chopped and cooked? Mm. <laughs> I couldn't resist a third caller this week and it was from Lenny in Lexington and she asked me what I thought of a voodoo doll as a gift. Well, Lenny, I'd never thought of it, to be honest. But when I looked at the link Lenny sent me, I noticed the voodoo doll is actually called a bad boss doll. So it allows someone to stick pins in the doll as if it were their real boss and force Imura to give them a pay raise, a day off, or even extra vacation time. <laughs> but there's always the option of just subjecting them to pain, just for pain's sake, isn't there? The doll even comes with a set of pins. Very handy indeed. Oh dear. Of course, around here, me mother old nan doesn't practice voodoo. Well, only witchcraft, and she's more likely to stick the pins directly into the person. Yeah, she wouldn't bother with an intermediary like a doll. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com, where they're all stored for you as podcasts. So if you want me repeats or can to listen to me voice all over again, stop by and say hi. Me dubious Coman agent, 50%, is lining me up with a new ad this week, and he's got something really odd this time around. <laughs> oh dear, I'm looking through his latest offering, as you'd expect. He's found something quite different, but definitely original for sure. <laughs> anyway, here goes. Have you only received just one or two cards this year? Feeling a bit neglected and left out? When your co-workers and family members seem besieged with seasonal greetings. Yet your couple of dreary old cards look rather sad, don't they? Well, everything can change today. That's right, today. As here at Card Flood, we'll guarantee you beat out the competition and have more than anyone you know. That's right. <laughs> You'll see at least 100 handwritten cards in your mailbox within 48 hours. Every one of them has the personal touch as our card writing team in India have been writing away. Yep, hard at it since June. But wait, we've got a deal of the season and just for Ned Natter Show listeners, with every 100 cards you order, we'll add a bonus of 50 more to make you feel like a real winner. <laughs> so visit our website today and learn more at conthemallwithacardflood.org and make sure... You don't get left out today. <laughs> you know, what will they think of next? I might just order a hundred and get them sent to me neighbour, old Rush. <laughs> oh He'll be puzzling away for over a month trying to work out how so many people know him, as most of the time they just dodge him and his continual political rhetoric, so it'll baffle him into next year. <laughs> Anyway, before I leave his time, me and everyone here at Two Medicine Farm want to wish you, me lovely listeners, a very happy holiday and thank you so much for listening every week to me show. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show and whichever way you dice it, me show is unpasteurized and unfiltered. And that's all me lovelies, and on that note, we better go. 
So until next time, remember farm as are getting older, some more than others. It's time some new blood came down on the farm and gave us an hand. Shite matters, without us, you wouldn't have anything to eat. Without me, your Wednesdays would be much fun. <laughs> In the meantime, you can find me and all my radio shows at nednatter.com. Yep, they're all safe use podcasts too. Add to that, there's me social media links. So come by and say hi. It'd be great to hear from you. Thanks so much for listening. It's been a pleasure chatting with you again. And I hope you'll join me on the Ned Nat Show soon. So until then, keep a smile on your face. Think positive and don't sweat the small stuff. The grass is not always green on the other side. It might just be a freeway. <laughs> Goodbye, my lovelies. <laughs> The Ned Natter Show is written and presented by you, Ned Natter. The show is produced and recorded live in Florida, USA by Doris Billsborough. And the Ned Natter Show is managed and represented by Grace Windsor at Nexus Media.